For this tutorial, we're going to be looking at subroutines, and in particular, I want to try to illustrate the difference between two very specific types of subroutines. One is called a function, and one is called a procedure. Some languages don't distinguish, they simply have their own version of subroutines, but in Turing, you have different, uh, there's different ways to create functions and procedures, and there's different rules that go around their creation. The important thing that I want to look at in this tutorial, I'm not going to develop any code between a function and a procedure. I just want to illustrate the difference between the two of them. So a procedure is some code that takes zero or more parameters. So it might take no parameters. It might take some parameters. And it performs an action based on that code. But it's basically a standalone program. It's a subprogram that does its job, and that's it. So I'm going to give you an example of that, and the example is the delay procedure. So the delay procedure uh, will delay the program for n milliseconds. I don't know if that's the official designation, but that's what it does. So when you, or when Turing executes, executes this code delay, it will read this parameter, 1000, and that tells it how many milliseconds should I delay? So in this case, 1,000 milliseconds is one second. To illustrate the delay taking place, I'm going to say program starting. And on the other side of it, I will put program ending. And actually, just to make sure we're really clear, I'm going to bump that up to 3,000. So that's three seconds of delay. So if I run this, program starting, one, two, three, program ending. There was a three second delay built in there. So this is an example of a procedure. This is a procedure because it didn't require any intervention from me. All I had to do was provide it a value. Sorry, I had to provide it a value as the parameter and I had to call the procedure. Now I can also give you an example of a procedure that um, actually changes a value. So let's look at, uh, in this case, I'm going to look at the RAND procedure, and it's going to generate a random number. So RAND, and I'm going to put in value R, and this is going to generate a random value between 0 and 0 0.99999, and then it's actually going to save the value in the variable provided as a parameter. So the value that I generate, so the RAND, the RAND procedure generates the, the, the random value between 0 and 0.999999, and then we have to save that somewhere. And so we save that in the variable R. So to do that, I'm going to need a variable R, var R real. And so I'll put a little bit of code around this. Put generate random value. And then put random value r. So let's run our program again. Program starting a delay for three seconds. And then we generated our random value of 0.138494. And that's contained in the variable r. And before this point, the value, the random, the variable r didn't have anything in it. So it actually got a value. So this is a procedure. Oh, I should have uh, put that in here as well. Procedure to generate a random value. And this one is a procedure to delay the program for n milliseconds. So what's the difference now between a procedure and a function? A function is a subroutine that takes one or more parameters. So once again, the idea that we're going to probably be giving parameters to these things. And it returns some value. And this RAND procedure is very, kind of crosses the line. It makes it a little fuzzy between procedures and functions. The way that a function works and there's a good chance that you've used this in uh, Turing already, which it would be uh, another example of a function would be the square root. So I'll say the square root of x. And so this is a function 
that takes the square root and returns, put that in capitals, the result. And I'm actually going to put that in capitals, result, because that's going to, when we create our own functions, that word result is going to become important. Now, unlike, so let's say put uh, take square root and put the square root is x. So you might think, okay, this is very similar. I'm going to create a variable x, and that's also going to be real. And if I try to run this now, I actually get an error. And the error says, expression is not a procedure and can't be called. These procedures, delay and rand, I just called them just the same way I have the, the command put, which I called, and then the procedure, and then the command put. Command put, call the procedure, the command put. With a function, a function returns a value we have to do something with that value and that means we have to put it into a variable so I need to actually say answer equals square root so I'm gonna need another variable var answer which is also real so now I'm taking the square root and I'm going to create a result here and I'm gonna save it in answer I try to run that and it says program starting and take square root, nothing happens. I've got a problem here, and I don't know if you can read this or not in the bottom. I have an error, it says, variable has no value, close. So that's the other thing. In this procedure, rand, I gave it the uninitialized variable r, and that was fine because the procedure rand takes r and fills it with a value between 0 and 0.99999. Square root doesn't actually do anything to change the value. It performs a mathematical operation on the value and it returns what the answer is. So I need to add a little bit of extra code here. I could just put in a value. I could just say x equals 5 and now I could take the square root of that. So if I run this now program is starting, we've still got our time delay of 3000 and I take my random value and I took the square root and I got an answer of 5 but that's because I didn't change my code again. X is the value I'm taking the square root of but what is my answer going to be? So notice that X didn't change. X was still equal to 5 even after the square root was complete. So one last time, I'll make this a little shorter, one last time program starting, I took the square root and this time because I saved the value of the square root in the variable answer and then I output answer, now I have properly found out that the square root of 5 is 2.236068. So there is an example of a very clear example of a procedure with one parameter. It's basically a little miniature program that does something and in this case it takes one parameter. Here is a very clear example of a function with one parameter and this function returns a result of that is going to be the calculation of the square root of whatever the parameter was that I gave it. So I fed it the parameter x and it turned around and it fed back the value of the square root of x so whenever I have a function I have to do something with that function it can't just stand alone like this. The easiest way to do something with a function is to assign it to another variable. And then straddling the difference between them, it's still a procedure because you can see I'm not assigning this to a variable. I didn't say r equals rand, I just said the random value and in this case I gave it a parameter but I gave it a parameter that was going to be changed and that's another special way of dealing with procedures. So hopefully that gives you some idea. The important thing to remember here is that when you're dealing with a function it's going to take a parameter and then it's going to return a value. It could take more than one parameter as well. Whereas with a procedure it's simply going to do something which could change a variable but it might not change any variables, it might not require any variables. 
This is a complicated concept, which is why I didn't write any of my own functions or procedures here. So you might have to look at this a couple of times. Hopefully that makes sense to you. And uh, take a look at how to write your own functions and procedures, and hopefully that will continue to illustrate this concept.